What's up everybody? Welcome to Rotor Right Workbench. I'm Lex Flyer C, and today I'm going to show you the steps you will need to follow to set up your RadioMaster TX16S radio and get it ready to bind to your drone. If you purchase one of our bind and fly drones from the Rotor Right store, or if you are following along with one of our build videos and you have our pre-configured pre-tuned dump file for your flight controller, we have a pre-configured setup file for your RadioMaster TX16S radio to make it really easy to get started. I'm going to show you the steps you'll need to follow to set up your TX16S radio and get it ready to bind to your drone. In the box you'll find a sticker sheet, a user manual, of course the TX16S radio, an extra set of grip pads, a keychain, a USB-C cable, a lanyard, a clear protective film for the screen, and some gimbal spacers in case you ever need to change them. One more important thing you'll need for your radio is a pair of 18650 batteries, and we have them available in the Rotor Riot store. The first thing I always notice when I open the box is the screen protection sticker on the top of the radio. It is a good idea to remove this sticker and replace it with the screen protector included with the radio. I'm not going to demonstrate this on camera because there are many other, better YouTube videos out there that you can follow along with to install it without creating bubbles. You'll notice that there are two USB ports on this radio. One on the bottom, which is used for charging, and one on the top, which is used for plugging into the computer for firmware updates and playing on the simulator. Be sure that if you need to connect to the computer, you use this top port. On the top next to the USB-C port, you'll find the trainer port. And on the back of your radio is the module bay, where you would install an external module if you want to run protocols like Crossfire, Ghost, or Express LRS. On the bottom you also have your SD card slot and a couple of serial ports for programming. You can use the kickstand if you choose to set it down on the desk simply by sliding it up into place. This is the antenna that's connected to the 4-in-1 internal module and you can position it in different orientations to improve your signal. The first step in setting up this radio is to install the batteries. Be sure to install them in the correct orientation to prevent frying the radio. The positive and negative are labeled on this battery and the smaller circle side is positive just like on a AA battery. But if you purchase your batteries somewhere else, just be sure to know which side is positive and negative. To install them, flip over the radio and slide off the back cover. Remove the battery tray and set the radio aside. This sticker warns you to put the batteries in the right orientation or you can damage your radio. Peel off the sticker and install the batteries with the negative larger pad side towards the spring. Now that the batteries are installed into the battery tray, we can install the battery tray into the radio. Flip the radio over and protect the gimbals by keeping them off the table. This connector has two sides, a flat side and a side with two prongs. You want to install this cable with the flat side facing down. Place it in position and press down to lock it in place. Now that your wires are connected, simply slide your battery tray into the battery bay, making sure the wires don't get pinched, and reinstall the cover. When reinstalling the cover, be sure that the slots on the bottom line up with the rails that they lock into. Slide the cover on, press down hard, and slide it forward until it locks in place. With the batteries installed and the covers back in place, now we are going to power up the radio for the first time. Press and hold the blue power button until you see the blue light and then release. Welcome to HTX. Warning. If you see throttle warning, lower the throttle stick all the way down to clear the warning. If you see switch warning, flip all seven switches to the farthest position forward or away from you to clear the warning. Now it is time to install the custom models. You can find a link in the description to all of the files and resources you will need for this radio. Download the TX16S models that are linked in the description and save them to a folder on your computer. There are different versions of the TX16S radio, so be sure to download the correct version of the files for your radio. Now take the supplied USB-C cable that came with your radio, plug it into your computer's USB port and into the top USB-C port of the radio just like this. Once the USB-C port has been plugged into your radio, you will see three different options to choose from. USB joystick for playing simulator, USB storage, and USB serial. We're going to select USB storage so that it will connect to our computer and we can place the files that are needed on the internal SD card. Use the jog wheel to rotate down to USB storage and press in on the jog wheel to select. Once you have plugged in your USB port and selected USB storage, you should see two drives pop up in Windows File Explorer or Finder on a Mac. I'm going to show you how to do this on Windows. We want to select the USB drive rather than the TX16S drive because the USB drive is going to give us access to the internal SD card. Once you have selected the USB drive, navigate to the models folder and delete all of the internal models. You can make a backup if you wish, but it isn't necessary. Control A on your keyboard will select all and press delete. Next, open the TX16S models folder that you downloaded to your computer and copy and paste these files into the USB drive models folder. 
If a window pops up asking if you would like to copy without properties, go ahead and click do this for all current items and click yes. If you would like to have our custom Rotor Riot theme and background, go ahead and copy and paste the Rotor Riot folder into the themes folder of your radio. Again, if you see a warning pop up, go ahead and click do this for all current items and click yes. You can also customize the image shown during the boot sequence of the TX16S by dragging a file named splash.png into the images folder of the TX16S. There's a link to this file in the description as well. Simply drag the splash.png file into the images folder of your radio and replace the file in the destination when prompted. Click yes to say that you're sure you want to copy the file without its properties. And now when you reboot your RadioMaster TX16S radio, your new boot logo will show during startup. Now that all the files have been copied, we can unplug the USB-C port from our radio. Now that the models have been installed, we should be able to press and hold the model key to see all of the models that are currently on the radio. At the time of the recording of this video, we have included five different radio models for the 4-in-1 version. FR Sky RXSR, FR Sky SPI R8, Crossfire, Ghost, and Express LRS. This may be updated as time goes on. INT in the model name means that the model uses the internal module, and EXT models will require an external module in order to use them. You will need to choose the model that corresponds to the receiver your drone has installed. To change models, rotate the scroll wheel to highlight the model name and press in on the scroll wheel to select the model. Press once again to select the model. If you press and hold the model button, you will see that the new model has been highlighted. Press return to go back. One more thing you can do with the Rotor Riot TX16S Radio Master Radio is to install the Rotor Riot themes. To install the Rotor Riot theme, press and hold the Sys key and press page to page over to the screen that says themes. Use the scroll wheel to scroll down until you see the Rotor Riot theme and press in to select. Press again to set the theme as active and press return to exit. Now the rotor right theme has been successfully selected on your TX16S. To power down the radio, press and hold the blue power button until you feel the haptic vibration and then release. The final step in setting up your radio is binding it to the receiver on the drone. I will have separate videos for each of the radio protocols to show you their individual binding processes. I will add their links to the description as they are recorded. Thanks for watching guys. Let us know in the comments which drone you are hooking your TX16S radio to. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this. I'm Let's Fly RC, and we'll see you next time on Rotor Riot Workbench.